Hi guys, in this episode we're going to be taking a look at the Ryzen 5800X3D and see if it's still worthwhile today. If your computer is feeling the signs of aging a little, then there is a good chance you are running an older Intel or AMD processor to drive your sim racing experiences. Sadly though, this means you are likely to have to spend a small fortune on an upgrade, which is more or less a full new PC. There is another option, however, in the form of the 5800X3D if you happen to already be on an AM4 based machine. This is what we'll be looking at in this episode, so let's get to it. You can get away with frame stutters on flat screens or even a triple configuration. Of course, you'd rather not have it because it might put off our driving. However, if you are feeling uncomfortable in VR because your machine isn't able to pump out the frames quickly enough to fool your brain, it can lead to motion sickness and disorientation. Those things really aren't nice. This can be mitigated to some degree with technologies like a synchronous space warp, which allows your computer to get away with frame rate at the cost of some artifacting to project the next frame. This isn't ideal though, so this video is about trying to maximize your performance potential without that particular compromise and having to remortgage your house for an all bells and whistles new computer. I tried to keep the rig specifications down for this video. As a hardware enthusiast though, I have a tendency to have plenty of high-end hardware and not so much below that. I managed to scrounge around for a mid-range-ish system though and this will allow you to see the kind of relative performance benefit of upgrading to a 5800X3D. This will be matched against the 5900X to give you an idea of the benefit you'll see if your machine isn't much older than this processor. If you're further behind on the generation game, the benefit will only increase. Along with the processors, the testing rig is also running a ASUS ROG X570F motherboard with the latest BIOS, 32GB of 3466MHz DDR4, and an NVIDIA RTX 3090 reference board. All of this with the games being driven from an NVMe drive for loading the OS and the games. The headset we're using for the testing is the HP Reverb G2, a demandingly visual headset that is native PC VR. So we're not adding any more external dependencies in the mix. Sorry Quest 3 users, today is not your day, at least not when measuring pure system performance. Assetto Corsa Competizione is well known for its system requirements in VR. For that reason, many headset racers refuse to play it, and so it makes perfect sense for that to be the first game we talk about. Don't worry if you aren't sure how to read these graphs, we'll work through them together. We have GPU frame time, which is in blue, and we have a turquoise CPU frame timeline. CPU frame timing has an impact on how your GPU responds to frames. Looking at how the 5900X performs, we can see that many more frames are completed in the 5-7 millisecond range, with it not tailing off until we start getting to the 7 or 8 millisecond range. Looking at where the CPU has completed 99.9% .9 of frames, we are looking 21.6 milliseconds comparing that to the 5800x 3d and we can see from the same metric that we have that completed in 7.6 milliseconds remember here we're just talking cpu performance however this does mean that the 5800x 3d is able to complete its frames in half the time that its supposed big brother can which is pretty impressive so how does this affect the GPU, you might be asking? Well, you can see that the 5900 takes a little bit longer to complete GPU frames versus the 5800X3D. We can actually see that the 3D cache processor is able to complete 99.9% .9 of its frames in the time that the non-3D processor takes to do 99% of its frames. Look at the same metric though, and the figure is again quite high actually being 29.7 milliseconds. That's a worst case scenario of nearly 80 frames per second versus 30 frames a second, which is quite a big difference as you can probably imagine. Now, of course, this is a worst case scenario. I'm not suggesting the 5900 here is a slug, 
but what you will see in VR here is frame stutter. You will see frames dropped because of the CPU not being able to maintain your frame rate. Now, ordinarily, I'm running the Quest 3 at 72 frames per second. So actually, what this means is nearly all of my frames are being completed by the 5800X3D within its allocated time. This sadly just isn't the case with the 5900X. ACC and the Unreal Engine are well known to benefit greatly from a 3D cache. So we move on from a best case scenario for the 5800X3D to what is probably a worst case scenario, which is a game that actually runs pretty well in VR and maximizes GPU under most hardware conditions. In this comparison, we can see that we still have a reasonable improvement on CPU frame timing, but that doesn't move the bar much on GPU frame timing, with actually the 5800X 3D coming out fractionally slower than the 5900X, though this isn't something that would be noticeable in-game. There's not much to say here. If Ultima Ballista 2 is your only sim and you don't dabble elsewhere, then there's really not much reason for you to consider an upgrade to a 3D CAD processor, at least not of the same generation. Of course, this has lots of caveats that if you don't play any other games, because other games may benefit from such a 3D cache anyway. Lastly, we look at iRacing performance. And of the three sims that we've picked here, this is the one that's most middle of the road in terms of its need for a super fast CPU to deliver on GPU performance. However, we do see a noticeable improvement from the 5900 to the 5800X3D. With the 5900, we're looking at that taking up to 17.9 milliseconds, at least for the processor. And that isn't much better on the GPU front with that taking 16.3 milliseconds. Compare that to the 12 milliseconds and the 11.8 of the 3D cache processor, you can just have a much smoother experience using the 5800X 3D versus the other processor, with that only able to consistently maintain on the 99.9 percentile 55 frames per second. Again, not the end of the world, but you will notice these micro stutters and it will have some form of impact on your driving experience and immersion you're still going to notice this stutter even with the 3D cache processor if you're trying to maintain more than 80 frames a second. But if you have the option to run at 72, then this puts less strain on your hardware and you can get away with this kind of mid to high range level of hardware to deliver a great gaming experience. So you like the performance benefits. Can you upgrade without replacing your motherboard? If your motherboard is running on a B550 or X570 chipset, then the 5800X3D is an easy shoe-in. You might need to update the motherboard BIOS to be able to run it though. Many B350, X370, B450 and X470 based motherboards are also compatible, but the older you go, the less likely it is to work and you'll also be losing out on many of the other features that the processor has. If you aren't confident in replacing your computer processor, there are many computer stores that will be happy enough to do it for you. At the time of writing, you can pick up a 5800X3D for £300, $300 or €270. Euros. Now I may hear a few of you saying that the 7800X3D isn't much more expensive, and you'd be right. However, you have to factor in the need for a new motherboard and DDR5 memory. AM5 motherboards have a tendency to be quite expensive, so you are likely to be close to double the asking price of the 5800X3D, especially if you don't need to swap out a motherboard. The 5800X3D processor is significantly more expensive than the 5800X non-3D, and mostly good reason. We've shown graphs that highlight that the 5800X3D beats its bigger sibling, the 5900X, in two of the three games that we tried. If you are already struggling for performance, then why take the risk of upgrading to a non-3D cache processor, which might leave you needing more to be able to play games smoothly? 
even when you upgrade your video cards to a 40 series NVIDIA RTX, the 5800 performs really well for the money, many times beating out its more expensive rivals, at least in gaming. This isn't quite the end of the story though, as we've seen in AMS 2. True that most games will benefit greatly from the 3D cache, it is not a guarantee of better performance. I originally planned the video to come with an idea of how well this performs generally in all sims, but sadly that's not really possible. Some sims, especially because they're already maxing out your GPU, probably won't see the dramatic improvements that we see in Assetto Corsa Competizione. However, on games that either like very good single threaded performance or need a little more help driving your GPU, you should see a noticeable improvement. So games like ACC and iRacing. The 5800X3D performs so well that it is hard to find second hand for much less than the retail price. Then you are limited to a processor without warranty. So I'd steer clear of buying the processor second hand until it can be had for a bargain. As the price difference between the 7 series processors and the 5800X3D closes, it becomes less appealing. But for now at least it offers that final big upgrade before you need to start swapping out more parts. If you are not already running an AM4 platform processor, then upgrading to the 5800X3D is going to be less appealing. Intel are also doing some fantastic things over on their side, so don't discount them for an upgrade. Be aware you will be upgrading to something that is definitely more power hungry than what you use now. So that's it from me here today. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, don't forget to leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to see more of the kind of things that I do here. And until next time, bye bye for now. See you on Facebook.